Right. Namaste all. We will have four classes. One class, one technique. This is what we are going to do. So technique one, we will delve deeper into the technique. And these techniques are treasure mines, I will tell you. So what I refer to as a technique is a concept, is an understanding that can be expanded infinitely. Okay. So four techniques, four sessions, uh, one right now, one in the evening, second uh, tomorrow, same time, the third is tomorrow, same time, and fourth tomorrow evening, right? That's what we are going to do. <clears throat> now, let me give you a small brief introduction about it. Yogini Dasha is what we are going to learn. First of all, very quickly, what is the importance of Dasha? Dasha serves three purposes, to be very honest. First of all, Dasha is a remedy. Dasha is a remedy. In astrology, if I have to talk about remedy, no? if I have to talk about remedy, then time is the biggest remedy. Vedas, why Veda give so much pressure to, so much importance to understanding astrology is because of this particular reason. Right? The Vedic sage is of the opinion that a particular yajna, a particular worship should be done on a particular time. Say it should be done on Amavasya, it should be done on Purnima. So how you are supposed to find that Amavasya or Purnima? You are supposed to find it using astrology. And astrology deals with all these calculations. Right? If you people can turn on your cameras, I will be able to better understand if you are understanding me or not. So for Namaste those who don't Namaskar. for those who don't have a camera on, I will not take the responsibility of your understanding because I will not see your faces, right? Yeah. Right. So that is one thing that is related to with us, the Vedic practices, Homa, Yakya, whatever. Expanding it to everything in life. The time is very important. It is a saying in Hindi. I'm pretty sure many of you can understand Hindi well. Right? So astrology, specifically Dashas tell you when it is the right time. I'll tell you the concept of astrology is very simple. You can do any profession. You can engage in any profession. But if you choose an astrologically correct profession, what will happen? Planets will support you. The path will be easy. The process will be easy. So the first concept with Dasha, I will leave the philosophy in a nutshell. The first concept of a Dasha is the right time. For an example, suppose I want to sell my property. Right? Now, suppose I have Capricorn in my fourth house, I am a Libra ascendant. And I have Saturn aspecting my fourth house, right? Suppose Saturn is in the seventh house. Now, if in the Dasha of Dasha Antra, Dasha of Saturn, if I want to sell my property, I will not be able to do it. Because fourth lord aspecting the fourth house will promote to keep the significations of the fourth house intact. So that will be a futile exercise. So you are not advised to do an exercise at all, right? Because it will create a chaos. You will take six months, seven months trying to sell the property. And the planets are saying that you cannot sell it, right? So it will take a whole lot of time causing you discomfort and everything, right? That's the first stuff. Second thing, suppose the fourth Lord is in the 12th house. Okay? In the Dasha of this planet, the fourth Lord in the second house, if you want to sell the property, you have to sell it on a loss. Once again, don't do it. Now, suppose there is a good planet in the 10th house, say uh, Digbali sun, and he's expecting the fourth house. 
Now, if in the dash of this planet you go to sell your property, it will give you like it, it will go at a good price, it will go at a better price. So, this is why dasha is important. You know, which time factor is important at what time should be understood beforehand. You know what you can expect from a particular time, and then you do it. Getting my point? That's the first most important use of any dasha. You should understand it, right? Not only technically, but how it works in our lives. Point one. The second point is the result of any planet. And this is a particular case with dashas like <coughs> yogini. So there are three types of dasha, I will be very honest. One type of dasha needs you to calculate the maximum longevity of person, right? And the dasha will be divided accordingly. So if your life is 60 years, the dasha will only run for 60 years. A grade classics like Vara Meher, Inbriya Jatak or Saravali advocate this kind of dasha only. Their philosophy is that whatever the planetary placements personally enjoy every result. So if your life is 60 years, dasha will be of 60 years. If the life is 80 years, dasha will be of 80 years. By the end of dasha life, it's right. That's the concept. One type of dasha. The second type of dasha is like Vimshotri dasha that runs for a maximum of 120 years. And you are supposed to live a certain part of it. With such dashas, what happens is if you are not going to see the dasha of the planet, if you are not going to see the dasha of the planet which is causing a particular result, you are not going to get that result. Getting my point? So suppose you have a 10th Lord exalted, but the dasha of the 10th Lord comes at the 80 years of age. And you are going to have a 60 years of life. That means to say you are never going to see the maximum professional, you know, maximum professional advancement of your life. Getting my word? That's the second phase with the dasha. Yogini dasha is a type of dasha that's repetitive, that ends at 36 years. And after 36 years, there is two opinions. One opinion is what I follow. The second opinion is what I'm going to teach. And I, like while teaching, I will teach you all the options, all the opinions. So whatever you feel suitable, you use that, right? I will come to the philosophy of Yogini Dasha later on. That's the second thing, right? And the third thing, <clears throat> the third uses of the Dasha is also in the analysis of a household. Generally, when I do a consultation, I don't do a consultation without questions. So if you want to get a consultation from me, you have to send me a list of questions, right? So that I focus myself on that particular area only. Getting my point? I cannot possibly read every house, every combination of horoscope. That will be very vast, time-consuming process. But many a times, you know, the person may not want to get the answer of a specific question. He may, you know, just want to tell me something astrologically. Or he may be like, you know, sir, how is my time right now? So Dasha also works as a framework of analysis. And, you know, this framework of analysis is very important. There are three, four frameworks of analysis, I'll tell you. One is the yoga-based analysis. You must have seen astrologers who analyze the horoscope based on yoga only. You have Gajkeshri Yoga, Chandra Mangal Yoga, Kaimadrum Yoga, Veshi Yoga, Vashi Yoga, Vajra Yoga, Parijat Yoga, Parvat Yoga, Kahal Yoga, whatever. So the one set of astrologers who will analyze complete horoscope using yoga only. Right? There is one set of astrologers that I am that will analyze the horoscope based on questions only. Right. So you tell me, sir, I want to know about marriage. So my complete focus will be on the marriage section only. There will be one set of astrologers that will go with the analysis of houses. So he will tell you the analysis of the first house, analysis of the second house, third house, fourth house. Of course, the problem with this third approach with analysis of different houses is that you can never get enough of it. You can never tell everything that is to be known. The fourth approach is to see the life as per the Shantra Shantra. So when a horoscope comes to you, this is the first step, right? What you will see? There is no question in front of you. There's just a horoscope. What you will see? Check the Shantra Dasha first and only analyze the Shantra Dasha Lord. 
don't go and analyze the whole horoscope it will take a whole lot of time if you want to analyze one horoscope with complete satisfaction it will take you four or five days to analyze one chart it's so quite a long time so see the dasha and analyze the chart as per the dasha only if the dasha is of mercury and antra dasha is of jupiter only analyze mercury jupiter understood done that's what with the dasha what is with yogini i'll tell you what is speciality with yogini dasha what is important with yogini dasha that needs to be understood so point 1 what is yogini yogini are taken in two ways right in a positive way yoginis and bhairavis are seen as those forces which help a sadhak right yoginis are bhairavis sadhak is someone who is an spiritual aspirant and yoginis will help that spiritual aspirant get siddhis right that is what they do with a sadhak for normal people they will create problems and hurdles that is important with yogini many a times you know you will listen to this question sir i am trying everything but nothing is happening i am trying every sort of remedy but nothing is happening the life is stuck some extra force has taken over me i am trying to do this but not able to i want to improve my relationship with my wife but every time i go to talk to her we end up fighting yogini so when you follow the chart yogini helps you get things easily when you go against the chart yogini obstructs your way that is a type of a force that will restrict you or push you without you knowing so you know if someone is getting something very exceptional that you think is you know we cannot achieve that you know like oh, there are many businessmen but few of them bill gates steve jobs are famous it is the power of yogini when you follow it then there are people you will listen to the stories right sir eight years i am trying for a job not getting anything satisfactory have done multiple remedies nothing is happening yogini once again right so yogini either helps you or stops you you cannot understand why it is happening until you understand yogini point 1 point 2 in the short life cases in, in in the chart of those people who are not going to live more than 36 years this is the favorite dasha as I, as i told in the leaflet the promotional leaflet the brochure that this is the favorite dasha of himalayan pandits of himachal pradesh assam jammu etc you know the areas where himalaya touches in india right why it is the favorite dasha that needs to be understood right this is the favorite dasha of those astrologers because because this is the only dasha which can cause death without the end of life you should understand this point very clearly every dasha is subservient to longevity in vimshotri dasha you will always read you will always learn you will always know that when the time is over when the longevity is complete if it coincides with the marak dasha the person will die if it is not coinciding with the marak dasha then even in a bad dasha he can die but the important point is that the longevity should exhaust the longevity should finish that is not the condition of yogini yogini can kill you any time right so that's why yogini is important to be seen specifically in the case of akal mrityu where the person have died before time yogini will have a role to play in every bad dasha antar dasha combination of yogini the person is highly vulnerable to a accidental death so if you are going to use astrology against someone yogini is the tool but of course that should not be done or of course i am talking about it but you cannot do it because certainly i am not going to teach how to use it against anyone but still right you know if you want to take down anyone 
align your steps with the bad dasha bad yogini dasha and the dasha of that particular person you will never be able to you know see the sunlight again this is the thing so that's you know yogini can be used both the ways the astrologer can also use it as a weapon and the other person is of course religion but for this particular reason you should understand yogini as it is this tells this comes to the third point <clears throat> what is the problem in astrology nowadays why we cannot do astrology this is our first technique also why we cannot do astrology the way we come to know that it was in the glorious past right i'll tell you you know the name of varamihir right why varamihir is named as varamihir varah means a boar suar suar mihir what is the name you are telling a respected person a pig so that's not a very good name but why he is known as varam here i'll tell you there are two version of the stories for it one version is that varameher was working for a king and he told that the child the child of the king will die on this particular day at this particular hour and a boar a pig will you know boar boar is a jungle you know wild pig a boar will kill him with his horn right there's a horn on the tusk of the boar the boar will kill him so king came to new and king told that if my child survives i will execute you because then you will be tumko phansi de di jayegi you you will be killed if my child survives and varamehi tells it in advance that your child is going to die and the boar will hit him he will die because of that so what the king does he tells his people that there should be no boar in the complete area and specifically on that particular day there are soldiers everywhere and there is the mahal of the king there is the palace of the king and the child of the king is on the top floor of the palace of course boars cannot fly right so the child of the king is on the top floor of the palace and there are soldiers on every floor of the palace at every gate at every door at every window and the child is at the top floor playing with his friends the time passes and vara and vara mihir was called by the king and the king asked him that you told that my child will die right see my child is on the top floor he haven't died yet vara mihir said you must check the king went upstairs he came to the room he found all the friends of the prince playing but the prince was not there they go to the balcony and they saw the prince died the emblem the you know the palace of the king was having the boar head made of brass put it everywhere mahal ke aas pass mein lagate hain wo as an artifact the boar head made up of bronze or some metal was put everywhere on the top of the palace the child of the king went outside to take some air you know fresh air take some fresh air he went out a wind came the metallic face of the boar fell down and went through the heart of the child and he died that's why he is called varamehir because this was the prediction which made him famous the same prediction was done by narpati who wrote narpati jayacharya the child of the king went for went to play what shikar ko kya kehte went 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 to shikar hunting 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 the child of the king went for hunting right just give me a second <clears throat> just give me one second right so the king of the child the child of the king the prince went for hunting narpati so the child was you know he haven't came back by evening so the astrologer was called narpati was called narpati told that your child died the prince died everyone was mourning but the next day the king came the, the prince came and narpati the author of narpati jayacharya 
was hanged to death in the center of the city. That's why Narapati Jaichari is an incomplete text. And that's why we don't use it for prediction. Narapati Jaichari is very famous. Many astrologers use it. I don't. Because the techniques that he wrote, he used that and got executed because of that. So should it be followed? Do you get my point? Do you get my point? So you came to know this grandeur of, you know, like astrology is able to predict this, astrology is able to predict that. You must have heard that when Shreel, Shreel Prabhupada was born, he was a Bengali. Astrologers saw his horoscope and told that this person will make many temples throughout the world. And no one believed it. But how he will make? He was from a normal middle class family. But see what Prabhupada went, what Prabhupada did. He made temples all over the world, right? Where is that astrology now? Where is that astrology now? You cannot do it. We cannot do it. I will use the word we. We cannot do it. Where is that astrology? It is lost. But why? It is lost because now astrology is a play. Now astrology is a time pass. We do it for passing. There is no serious, there is no serious approach, serious understanding, or serious thinking in astrology left in the world. I will be very honest. With you. Nowhere. So that is the psychological aspect, and of course, I discuss psychological aspects in free YouTube video, not in the classes. The problem, the number one problem, I'll tell you, is to convert everything to planets. The major problem is to convert everything to planets, everything to planets, everything to planets. Even if someone is having beard or no beard, you will put it to planets. What about Rashi? What about house? We'll talk about something. Na? If, if, uh, if this Rashi is activated, then if this house is activated, then if this aspect is activated, then getting the one, why we scum everything to planets only? That is major problem number one. And why I am telling you this is for an important reason. There are eight yogi. There are eight yoginis, or of course, you may not be aware of the name. So I have made a small presentation. Very unlikely of me to do. Still. We are free for YouTube. The YouTube but whatever be the guess. So there are eight yoginis, right? Mangala, Pingala, Dhanya, Brahmari, Padrika, Kulka, Siddha, and Sankara. And I have just made it for the introductory class. For other classes, there is no slide. Right? Because everything is in the mind. So the problem is that you say Mangala period is moon period. Problem. It is a problem. It is a big, big problem. We say Mangala is moon. Pingala is Sun, Dhanya is Jupiter, Brahmari is Mars, Badrika is Mercury, Ulka is Saturn, Siddha is Venus, and Sankata is Rahu. And this is the biggest problem that you come across. The biggest, biggest problem. And if you follow this, my friend, you will never be able to understand astrology at all. Let me tell you. You will never be able to understand astrology. Why? Why is such fascination with moon? I think moon is bribing astrologers to have the fascination. So my first point is take the word literally always everywhere in astrology. Exaltation means uch. Uch means someone who is above. Doesn't mean good. It means above. The power to overpower doesn't mean the power to do good. Do you get my point? It only indicates the power to overpower. Ucha means someone who is on the higher pedestal. Doesn't mean he is good. But Hitler was in higher pedestal for some country. But was he a good person? No. But at his time, everyone believed that he was a good astrologer. He, he was a good person. Those who believed in his idea believed that he is a good guy. Getting my point? So that is first biggest problem that you will come across in astrology that we don't take the words verbatim. Take the words verbatim. 
getting my point so, uch that means prominent not good right understand this okay swa rashi the planet is into his own character so saturn in own character is still a malefic and it doesn't happens to become a benefic by any way getting my point that needs to be understood that needs to be understood whether the person have an exalted mars or debilitated mars exalted moon or debilitated moon, they both by the nature of mars and moon will create partitions in their homeland and will create enmity between people no matter what because that is what moon does creating enmity between husband and wife enmity between two people moon is narad getting enmity between people what you are doing go provoke him provoke him and that is what mars does right so mars is always a fighter exalted debilitated in both the cases a fighter in both the cases he will destroy things understand it this particular way so this is the first thing this is the first aspect this is the first technique but i'll tell you the third part why yogini dasha should be used because yogini is free of this is moon this is mars you get something new something new that you don't know in astrology right there is no planet named mangala but there is a yogini named mangala right so that is the speciality with yogini that you don't get anywhere and there is a fourth thing fourth thing right you know the fourth thing you know that there is something known as chakra chakra you understand what is the chakra chakra is a discus of vishnu by the way chakra so in astrology there is a horoscope right and there is a chakra chakra is circle a specific diagram sarvatobhadra chakra you heard of right how many of you know about sarvatobhadra chakra hmm. so now there are many chakras as such sarvatobhadra chakra suri kala nal chakra chandra kala nal chakra naragara chakra there are multiple chakras are there tripata ki chakra multiple chakras are there and there are very few dasas see you can experiment on chakras that's all fine there's no issue if you want to experiment with the chakra but there is no dasha this very very few dashas which are explicitly stated to be used with chakras there are very few dashas which is explicitly stated to be used with a chakra and one of those few dashas is yogini just is which is you know explicitly told to be used with the chakra tripata ki chakra and to time the death of children specifically before the age of 24 this tripata ki chakra and this is always used in a bad yogini dasha with a bad tripata ki combination the child or the diseased person will never be able to survive getting my point and this chakra makes the thing quite easily easier Oh. Makes the study of astrology, or even make the analysis very easy, very very easy. You know, if you want to learn series, if you want to learn astrology, parampara astrology, the the tradition that I belong to, write one thing in your mind very straight. That a horoscope and a planet are the weakest mode to analyze and make prediction. Weakest mode, not the most powerful one. Getting my point. Understand this. One house will have twenty, thirty significations. If one house is activated, you will tell thirty things. That's not a very pinpointed prediction. That is a very vague prediction. Getting my point. The natal horoscope is not meant for predicting. It is meant for advising. Chakras are the actual thing that is meant for prediction. Precise to the point of prediction. Getting my point? Like in Sarvato Badr Chakra, you will have twenty-eight stars to predict, right? So the complete life divided into twenty-eight sections. That is more minute as compared to the complete life divided into twelve sections, isn't it? 
that is that is so this is the fourth important thing with yogini much about the what is the is speciality with yogini right 